2 Samuel 1, 2 Samuel 1. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was, when he came to David, that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle, many of the people are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan his son are dead also. So David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan his son are dead? Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on Mount Gilboa, there was Saul, leaning on a spear. And indeed the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me. And I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me again, Please stand over me and kill me, for anguish has come upon me, but my life still remains in me. So I stood over him and killed him, because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm, and have brought them here to my Lord. Therefore David took hold of his own clothes and tore them, and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Then David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of an alien, in a male kite. So David said to him, How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of the young men and said, Go near, and execute him. And he struck him so that he died. So David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Then David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. And he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Indeed it is written in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For the shield of the mighty is cast away there. The shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet, with luxury who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. 2 Samuel 2 It happened after this that David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelites, and Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. And David brought up the men who were with him, every man with his household. So they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, the men of Jabesh Gilead were the ones who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead, and said to them, You are blessed of the Lord, for you have shown this kindness to your Lord, to Saul, and have buried him. And now may the Lord show kindness and truth to you. I also will repay you this kindness, because you have done this thing. Now therefore, let your hands be strengthened, and be valiant. For your master Saul is dead and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Ner, 
commander of Saul's army, took Ishbosheth the son of Saul and brought him over to Mahanam. And he made him king over Gilead, over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. Only the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Now Abner the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, went out from Mahanam to Gibeon. And Job the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David, went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon. So they sat down, one on one side of the pool and the other on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Job, Let the young man now arise and compete before us. And Job said, Let them arise. So they arose and went over by number, twelve from Benjamin, followers of Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and twelve from the servants of David. And each one grasped his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side. So they fell down together. Therefore that place was called the Field of Sharp Swords, which is in Gibeon. So there was a very fierce battle that day. And Abner and the men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. Now the three sons of Zeruiah were there, Job and Abishai and Asarhal. And Asarhal was as fleet of foot as a wild gazelle. So Asarhal pursued Abner, and in going he did not turn to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Asarhal? He answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn aside to your right hand or to your left and lay hold on one of the young men and take his armor for yourself. But Asarhal would not turn aside from following him. So Abner said again to Asarhal, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I face your brother Job? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner struck him in the stomach with the blunt end of the spear, so that the spear came out of his back. And he fell down there and died on the spot. So it was that as many as came to the place where Asarhal fell down and died, stood still. Job and Abishai also pursued Abner. And the sun was going down when they came to the hill of Amma, which is before Jabai the road to the wilderness of Gibeon. Now the children of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner and became a unit, and took their stand on top of a hill. Then Abner called to Job and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that it will be bitter in the latter end? How long will it be then until you tell the people to return from pursuing their brethren? And Job said, As God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then by morning all the people would have given up pursuing their brethren. So Job blew a trumpet. And all the people stood still and did not pursue Israel any more, nor did they fight any more. Then Abner and his men went on all that night through the plain, crossed over the Jordan, and went through all Bithran. And they came to Mahanam. So Job returned from pursuing Abner. And when he had gathered all the people together, there were missing of David's servants nineteen men and Asarhal. But the servants of David had struck down, of Benjamin and Abner's men, three hundred and sixty men who died. Then they took up Asarhal and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in Bethlehem. And Job and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at daybreak. 2 Samuel 3 now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Sons were born to David in Hebron, his firstborn was Amnon by Ahinom the Jezreelites. His second, Chiliab, by Abigail the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. The third, Absalom the son of Makkah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. The fourth, Adonijah the son of Haggith. The fifth, Shephatiah the son of Abidal, and the sixth, Ithrem, by David's wife Eglah. These were born to David in Hebron. Now it was so, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner was strengthening his hold on the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine, whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah. So Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone into my father's concubine? Then Abner became very angry at the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show loyalty to the house of Saul your father, to his brothers, and to his friends, 
and have not delivered you into the hand of David. And you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman? May God do so to Abner, and more also, if I do not do for David as the Lord has sworn to him. To transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul, and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner another word, because he feared him. Then Abner sent messengers on his behalf to David, saying, Whose is the land? Saying also, Make your covenant with me, and indeed my hand shall be with you to bring all Israel to you. And David said, Good, I will make a covenant with you. But one thing I require of you, you shall not see my face unless you first bring Mitchell, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. So David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Give me my wife Mitchell, whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Palshiel the son of Laish. Then her husband went along with her to Bahurim, weeping behind her. So Abner said to him, Go, return. And he returned. Now Abner had communicated with the elders of Israel, saying, In time past you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then, do it. For the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. Then Abner also went to speak in the hearing of David and Hebron all that seemed good to Israel and the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner and twenty men with him came to David at Hebron. And David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Then Abner said to David, I will arise and go, and gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you, and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. So David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. At that moment the servants of David and Job came from a raid and brought much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Job and all the troops that were with him had come, they told Job, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he sent him away, and he has gone in peace. Then Job came to the king and said, What have you done? Look, Abner came to you. Why is it that you sent him away, and he has already gone? Surely you realize that Abner the son of Ner came to deceive you, to know you're going out and you're coming in, and to know all that you are doing. And when Job had gone from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner who brought him back from the will of Sirah. But David did not know it. Now when Abner had returned to Hebron, Job took him aside in the gate to speak with him privately, and there stabbed him in the stomach, so that he died for the blood of Asarhal his brother. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, My kingdom and I are guiltless before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Job and on all his father's house. And let there never fail to be in the house of Job one who has a discharge or is a leper, who leans on a staff or falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Job and Abishai his brother killed Abner, because he had killed their brother Esarhul at Gibeon in the battle. Then David said to Job and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes, gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn for Abner. And King David followed the coffin. So they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner, and all the people wept. And the king sang a lament over Abner and said, Should Abner die as a fool dies? Your hands were not bound nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so you fell. Then all the people wept over him again. And when all the people came to persuade David to eat food while it was still day, David took an oath, saying, God do so to me. And more also, if I taste bread or anything else till the sun goes down. Now all the people took note of it, and it pleased them, since whatever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it had not been the king's intent to kill Abner the son of Ner. Then the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? And I am weak today, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too harsh for me. The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. 2 Samuel 4 When Saul's son heard that Abner had died in Hebron, he lost heart, 
and all Israel was troubled. Now Saul's son had two men who were captains of troops. The name of one was Bana and the name of the other Rechab, the sons of Rimmon the Barodite, of the children of Benjamin. For Baroth also was part of Benjamin. Because the Barathites fled to Gatim and have been sojourners there until this day. Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son who was lame in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. And his nurse took him up and fled. And it happened, as she made haste to flee, that he fell and became lame. His name was Mephibosheth. Then the sons of Rimmon the Barodite, Rechab and Bana, set out and came at about the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who was lying on his bed at noon. And they came there, all the way into the house, as though to get wheat, and they stabbed him in the stomach. Then Rechab and Bana his brother escaped. For when they came into the house, he was lying on his bed in his bedroom. Then they struck him and killed him, beheaded him and took his head, and were all night escaping through the plain. And they brought the head of Ishbosheth to David at Hebron, and said to the king, Here is the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul your enemy, who sought your life. And the Lord has avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and his descendants. But David answered Rechab and Bana his brother, the sons of Rimmon the Barodite, and said to them, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from all adversity. When someone told me, saying, Look, Saul is dead, thinking to have brought good news, I arrested him and had him executed in Ziklag, the one who thought I would give him a reward for his news. How much more, when wicked men have killed a righteous person in his own house on his bed? Therefore, Shall I not now require his blood at your hand and remove you from the earth? So David commanded his young men, and they executed them, cut off their hands and feet, and hanged them by the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the tomb of Abner in Hebron. 2 Samuel 5 Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed we are your bone and your flesh. Also, in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel, and be ruler over Israel. Therefore all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem he reigned thirty-three years over all Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David, saying, You shall not come in here. But the blind and the lame will repel you, thinking, David cannot come in here. Nevertheless David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David. Now David said on that day, Whoever climbs up by way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, the lame and the blind, who are hated by David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. Then David dwelt in the stronghold, and called it the city of David. And David built all around from the millow and inward. So David went on and became great, and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Then Hiram king of Tyre sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters and masons and they built David a house. So David knew that the Lord had established him as king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for the sake of his people Israel. And David took more concubines and wives from Jerusalem, after he had come from Hebron. Also more sons and daughters were born to David. Now these are the names of those who were born to him in Jerusalem, Shamua, Shobab, Nathan, Solomon, Ibar, Elishua, Nephag, Japhia, Elishma, Eliada, and Eliphlet. Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, Go up for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. So David went to Baal Perzim, and David defeated them there. And he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me, 
like a breakthrough of water. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perzim. And they left their images there, and David and his men carried them away. Then the Philistines went up once again and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, and he said, You shall not go up. Circle around behind them, and come upon them in front of the mulberry trees. And it shall be, when you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the mulberry trees, then you shall advance quickly. For then the Lord will go out before you to strike the camp of the Philistines. And David did so, as the Lord commanded him. And he drove back the Philistines from Jeba as far as Gezer. 2 Samuel 6 Again David gathered all the choice men of Israel, thirty thousand. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name, the Lord of hosts, who dwells between the Cherubim. So they set the ark of God on a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ao, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, accompanying the ark of God. And Ao went before the ark. Then David and all the house of Israel played music before the Lord on all kinds of instruments of fir wood, on harps, on stringed instruments, on tambourines, on sistrums, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nachon's threshing floor, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error. And he died there by the ark of God. And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into the house of Obedam the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obedam the Gittite three months. And the Lord blessed Obedam and all his household. Now it was told King David, saying, The Lord has blessed the house of Obedam and all that belongs to him, because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedam to the city of David with gladness. And so it was, when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, that he sacrificed oxen and fatted sheep. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of a trumpet. Now as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Mitchell, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and whirling before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord, and set it in its place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had erected for it. Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. Then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and the men, to everyone a loaf of bread, a piece of meat, and a cake of raisins. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Mitchell the daughter of Saul came out to meet David, and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Mitchell, It was before the Lord, who chose me instead of your father and all his house, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore I will play music before the Lord. And I will be even more undignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. Therefore Mitchell the daughter of Saul had no children to the day of her death. 2 Samuel 7 Now it came to pass when the king was dwelling in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies all around, that the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains. Then Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But it happened that night that the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build a house for me to dwell in? 
For I have not dwelt in a house since the time that I brought the children of Israel up from Egypt, even to this day, but have moved about in a tent and in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about with all the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus shall you say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the sheepfold, from following the sheep, to be ruler over my people, over Israel. And I have been with you wherever you have gone, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and have made you a great name, like the name of the great men who are on the earth. Moreover I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more. Nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more, as previously. Since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and have caused you to rest from all your enemies. Also the Lord tells you that he will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you, who will come from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commits iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the blows of the sons of men. But my mercy shall not depart from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you. And your house and your kingdom shall be established forever before you. Your throne shall be established forever. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then King David went in and sat before the Lord. And he said, Who am I? O Lord God, and what is my house, that you have brought me this far? And yet this was a small thing in your sight, O Lord God. And you have also spoken of your servant's house for a great while to come. Is this the manner of man, O Lord God? Now what more can David say to you? For you, Lord God, know your servant. For your word's sake, and according to your own heart, you have done all these great things, to make your servant know them. Therefore you are great, O Lord God. For there is none like you, nor is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And who is like your people, like Israel, the one nation on the earth whom God went to redeem for himself as a people, to make for himself a name, and to do for yourself great and awesome deeds for your land, before your people whom you redeemed for yourself from Egypt, the nations, and their gods. For you have made your people Israel your very own people forever. And you, Lord, have become their God. Now, O Lord God, the word which you have spoken concerning your servant and concerning his house, establish it forever and do as you have said. So let your name be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of your servant David be established before you. For you, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed this to your servant, saying, I will build you a house. Therefore your servant has found it in his heart to pray this prayer to you. And now, O Lord God, you are God, and your words are true, and you have promised this goodness to your servant. Now therefore, let it please you to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken it and with your blessing let the house of your servant be blessed forever. 2 Samuel 8 After this it came to pass that David attacked the Philistines and subdued them. And David took Methagama from the hand of the Philistines. Then he defeated Moab. Forcing them down to the ground, he measured them off with a line. With two lines he measured off those to be put to death, and with one full line those to be kept alive. So the Moabites became David's servants and brought tribute. David also defeated Hadadezer the son of Rehob, king of Zaba, as he went to recover his territory at the river Euphrates. David took from him 1,000 chariots, 700 horsemen, and 20,000 foot soldiers. Also David hamstrung all the chariot horses, except that he spared enough of them for 100 chariots. When the Syrians of Damascus came to help Hadadezer king of Zaba, David killed 22,000 of the Syrians. Then David put garrisons in Syria of Damascus. And the Syrians became David's servants, and brought tribute. The Lord preserved David wherever he went. 
And David took the shields of gold that had belonged to the servants of Hadadezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. Also from Beta and from Barathai, cities of Hadadezer, King David took a large amount of bronze. When Toi king of Hamath heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, then Toi sent Joram his son to King David, to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toi. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, articles of gold, and articles of bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he had subdued. From Syria, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, from Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadezer the son of Rehob, king of Zaba. And David made himself a name when he returned from killing 18,000 Syrians in the Valley of Salt. He also put garrisons in Edom. Throughout all Edom he put garrisons, and all the Edomites became David's servants. And the Lord preserved David wherever he went. So David reigned over all Israel. And David administered judgment and justice to all his people. Job the son of Zeruiah was over the army. Jehoshaphat the son of Ahilad was recorder. Zadok the son of Ahidab and Ahimelech the son of Abiathar were the priests. Sarah was the scribe. Benah the son of Jehada was over both the Cherethites and the Pelethites. And David's sons were chief ministers. 2 Samuel 9. Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? And he said, At your service. Then the king said, is there not still someone of the house of Saul, to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed he is in the house of Machir the son of Amiel, in Lodabar. Then king David sent and brought him out of the house of Machir the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul your grandfather. And you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself, and said, What is your servant, that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba. Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You therefore, and your sons and your servants, shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest, that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth your master's son shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micha. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table. And he was lame in both his feet. 2 Samuel 10. It happened after this that the king of the people of Ammon died, and Hanan his son reigned in his place. Then David said, I will show kindness to Hanan the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness to me. So David sent by the hand of his servants to comfort him concerning his father. And David's servants came into the land of the people of Ammon. And the princes of the people of Ammon said to Hanan their lord, Do you think that David really honors your father because he has sent comforters to you? Has David not rather sent his servants to you to search the city, to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Therefore Hanan took David's servants, shaved off half of their beards, cut off their garments in the middle, at their buttocks, and sent them away. When they told David, he sent to meet them, because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, Wait at Jericho until your beards have grown, and then return. When the people of Ammon saw that they had made themselves repulsive to David, the people of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians of Beth Rehob and the Syrians of Zobah. 20,000 foot soldiers. 
and from the king of Makkah 1,000 men, and from Ishtab 12,000 men. Now when David heard of it, he sent Job and all the army of the mighty men. Then the people of Ammon came out and put themselves in battle array at the entrance of the gate. And the Syrians of Zobah, Beth Rehob, Ishtab, and Makkah were by themselves in the field. When Job saw that the battle line was against him before and behind, he chose some of Israel's best and put them in battle array against the Syrians. And the rest of the people he put under the command of Abishai his brother, that he might set them in battle array against the people of Ammon. Then he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the people of Ammon are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage, and let us be strong for our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what is good in his sight. So Job and the people who were with him drew near for the battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. When the people of Ammon saw that the Syrians were fleeing, they also fled before Abishai, and entered the city. So Job returned from the people of Ammon and went to Jerusalem. When the Syrians saw that they had been defeated by Israel, they gathered together. Then Hadadazer sent and brought out the Syrians who were beyond the river, and they came to Helam. And Shobach the commander of Hadadazer's army went before them. When it was told David, he gathered all Israel, crossed over the Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Syrians set themselves in battle array against David and fought with him. Then the Syrians fled before Israel. And David killed seven hundred charioteers and forty thousand horsemen of the Syrians, and struck Shobach the commander of their army, who died there. And when all the kings who were servants to Hadadazer saw that they were defeated by Israel, they made peace with Israel and served them. So the Syrians were afraid to help the people of Ammon anymore. 2 Samuel 11. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time.